Will steel armor make you unalive? Today, we are gonna answer that question. We have spent the last several weeks and several thousand dollars testing the theory that steel armor will get you killed. I wanna qualify myself a little bit. I am an armor manufacturer. I not only manufacture composite armor, like ceramics and polyethylene, but I also manufacture steel armor. I am in the business of stopping holes. I have no allegiance towards one or the other. I have allegiance towards effective body armor. Steel is effective body armor. I wanna dispel some myths today. There's a huge myth that just because you wear steel, you're automatically going to die. This is unequivocally not true. I take this incredibly seriously. The reason why is because there's a false narrative being pushed around that it will kill you. I also wanna to touch on another subject, how irresponsible it is for companies out there, you know who you are, to be selling steel armor without a frag mitigation coating. That is the caveat. Will it kill you? Sure can. If you don't implement some sort of a buildup coat with polyurea or putting it inside of a fragmentation protection sleeve that will keep the fragmentation of the bullet from going into your arms, legs, and neck. So what happens to a bullet when it hits a plate? That is called a bullet splash. I wanna clarify a few things here since we're getting scientific. Splash is what we're gonna be talking about during this entire video. It's what happens when a round hits a target and then goes perpendicular to the target into the subjects around it. Let's define spalling. Spalling is when the round hits a target and the target itself fragments and then hits its subjects behind it. This is important because we are not putting a hole in the armor. We are simply hitting the outside of it and splashing that round and showing you what happens when it does that. In layman's terms, spall is the armor fragmenting into something. Splash is the bullet fragmenting into something. I'm gonna dig into the test a little bit and what we did. Initially, we started off with pretty much what we knew was gonna happen was we were gonna shoot a plate with a bullet and we were gonna get fragmentation because it didn't have a coating on it. I want to also disclaim that just because I didn't coat this with a base coat, which is about a 16th inch thick, like the other companies sell, if it, even if it did have that regular base coating on it, the effect would have been the same. It offers no additional protection. Now that I've said that, steel plate, put it up against the uh, torso. We had it inside of the plate carrier just to see what it would do. And on the first shot, as anticipated, we blew a hole clean through the plate carrier. Would a raw piece of steel or a lightly coated piece of steel kill you or seriously injure you? Absolutely. Point proven, we tested it, there it is. On this test, what we did was we put up a plate with a frag mitigation coat to eliminate that bullet splash, and we ended up getting about 22 rounds into this plate, of which only two had fragmentation that made it outside of this coat. Shot number 11 and shot number 16 made it outside the coat. It's very important to note that the only two shots that had fragmentation come outside of the buildup coat were the edge shots, shots that were within looks like less than an inch and within about an inch of the edge. Edge to edge protection means, for example, in the case of steel, that the bullet will stop all the way out to the very edge of the plate. However, and this is important, so listen up. Some companies will build their plates out to allow those rounds to be stopped within that two inch perimeter, but no telling what's gonna happen outside of that two inch perimeter because the NIJ, as far as 0106 goes, only tests to two inches inside the edge of the plate. That being said, you could potentially be buying a 10 by 12 plate, but effectively it's really an only an eight by 10 plate. And the reason why is because you're missing that two inches of edge protection on the outside. It doesn't seem like much, but there's a significant amount of area on the outside of a plate. Take a rectangle, for example, 10 by 12 inches. That's 120 square inches. Then you take an eight by 10 rectangle. That's 80 square inches, 120 minus 80 is 40. So you've got 40 square inches or a third of the plate that's ineffective. Something to think about when you're looking at steel, which will pretty much guarantee that every square inch of this plate is going to be effective. However, there are some downsides to that. Obviously, when you're dealing with steel, you're dealing with that bullet splash that we talked about. And if you hit an edge shot, some of that can come out even on a frag mitigation coated plate. But as shown with this example, we had a bullet that took a turn for the worst on the very edge here, about three eighths in from the edge, just because it was on the edge of the ceramic. I build these plates to stop around all the way up to the edge. However, this is the disadvantage of ceramic in which it can hit the ceramic and then go another direction. 
and essentially come out the side of the plate. I think it's important to mention that both of these impacts, both on steel and ceramic, when you're talking about the edge shots that have made their way out of the plate, are both survivable impacts. Hell of a lot better to be wearing armor than it would be not to. Let's dig into the next test, where we had a coated plate inside of a plate carrier. I wanted to see what would happen with the fragmentation if it was in a plate carrier, and did that plate carrier offer any protection itself? Turns out it does. Here's what happened. We put this plate inside of the carrier. We proceeded to put about 20 rounds through it. 20 rounds into this plate, we began to start seeing some fraying at the bottom of the plate carrier. However, no fragmentation had completely penetrated the carrier at this point. Then we put another 10 rounds in it, coming to a total of 30 rounds put into this plate. So far, no penetrations, but we finally had the first opportunity for some fragmentation to come out the bottom. Then at about 40 to 50 rounds, we started seeing a noticeable amount of frag that ended up coming out the side of the plate carrier, right here, and again, at the bottom of the plate carrier, down here. What this tells me is, if I was able to put 20 rounds in before seeing even a little bit of frag start coming out of the plate carrier, I do wanna make an important point that even though we have fragmentation coming outside of the plate and then eventually making it its way outside of the plate carrier, let's go back to the initial shot that we took on this. This was at full velocity, immediately punching a hole through the plate carrier. What was happening here is that even though the round was going into the plate, it was being slowed by the polyurea coating, even if it was making its way out after 20 rounds, and then also slowed by the 500D nylon on the carrier. So by the time it hits you in the leg, is it even gonna break through the textiles that you're wearing? Is it gonna break skin? Probably not. However, I will say that there is a noticeable decrease of velocity by the time it comes out of the plate and out of the carrier and into the environment. That was after 20 rounds, and if you've taken 20 rounds and you start get fra getting fragmentation coming out of the plate, like I've said before, you should probably get the fuck out of the way. Something else that's important to note between ceramic and steel is we stacked plenty of rounds on this steel plate, never with a penetration. We stacked rounds up on the ceramic plate, and eventually we were able to pop a hole in the back of it. I'm not saying you're gonna get shot in the same place twice, it's probably not gonna happen, it's highly unlikely, but if it does, it could potentially be more detrimental wearing composite armor than it would be wearing steel armor. Everything comes with, there's a, you know, obviously a cost benefit analysis of which armor that you like. One of the armor systems being steel armor, which is less expensive, it can take more rounds, but it's a little bit heavier, so you're gonna have less mobility, or you go into the ceramic, which is gonna take less rounds, you're not able to stack those rounds, and you're gonna be paying more money for it, but you'll be able to move a little faster because it's lighter. So those are both the advantages and disadvantages of both. Again, to each his own. I still wear steel to this day. I am a, a huge supporter of steel armor if it's made properly. And just to kind of satisfy and pacify all of the naysayers out there when it comes to steel and to steer that narrative into a positive direction, we went out, spent the money and made the investment to be NIJ certified, to get a consistency in our steel to where I know I'm getting the exact same ballistic rated steel every time. I'm not trying to steer you in one direction or the other. You can make your own decision based on the information that I've provided you. Some people like steel, some people like ceramic. I like both, there's a place for both. Make your own decision based on the information that we gave you today. If you're not convinced that this entire process took place and that we thoroughly, thoroughly tested everything that we said we tested, you can go ahead and watch this video right here because what that's gonna do is show you the entirety of this test and I don't know, grab a coffee, grab some popcorn. It's gonna be a while. The video is a little bit longer. It's a little less entertaining. I wanted to create something that was a little more condensed and concise for you guys so that you have the opportunity to go over there and watch this. Thank you very much for watching. And I wanna say again, to all you turd nuggets out there, make an armor that does not have frag mitigation coating on it, you need to stop. While the public should do their research, it is our responsibility as armor manufacturers to provide you with the best solution for life-saving equipment.